year ago, I upgraded my table saw and I did a couple videos on my thought processes and the reason why I made the choice I did. Uh, I, would, I was on a really tight budget and I did this whole fundraiser where I sold a bunch of art, tools, woodworking, even had some donations and stuff like that. And I got close enough to this particular model that I could justify taking out a small loan for the rest of it. And subsequently, I got the absolute least expensive cabinet saw, or actually it's a hybrid saw, I discussed that in the earlier videos, uh, that I could get. It is the 1.75 horsepower motor from Sawstop, smallest, most basic fit. I'm completely happy with that. But when I got it, I did specifically get it for 110 volts for, because I was in a rental warehouse and I wasn't allowed to upgrade the electrical without hiring his electrician and that was going to be quite a big deal. And I also kind of thought it would be cool content for me to use it in its most basic setup and upgrade it later. And that is something that's fairly common when you're talking about these induction woodworking power tools. A lot of times at their smaller levels, there are upgrade paths. And some models like this particular one I have in the future, I can actually upgrade to a three horsepower motor just by ordering the motor and installing it. But today we're going to be talking about converting it from 110 to 220. The power upgrade we're going to be doing today is converting my table saw from 110 to 220. And theoretically, that shouldn't make any difference whatsoever. This is a 1.75 horsepower motor. At 110, 115, it's going to be pulling 14 amps. At 220, it pulls 7 amps. So basically, you can either start low with your voltage, 110 volts, and have a high amperage coming through the wires, or you can go up to 220 volts and have a lower amperage for the wires. The horsepower is still going to be the same. But there's a reason why most other countries, their main source of power is 220 or 240. Uh, we just started in the United States out at 110 because theoretically it's a safer voltage. You're less likely to electrocute yourself at 110 than 220. But there are some efficiencies when you step up the voltage and lower the amperage so when you're getting power to people's homes from you know the power stations where it's going over miles and miles of cables you lose less of power through heat and sound you know those power cables vibrating making sound that is a power loss now converting this to 220 from the plug or that my actually my uh fuse box here well that's not that big a difference so the power savings is inconsequential you will never realize it but it will be a smaller load on your entire house I mean how many times have you turned on your table saw or drill press or something like that where it ramps up well there's a big draw of amperage at that initial ramp up and if you don't have the biggest uh, fuse box out there you know all your lights might flicker or dim for just a fraction of a second well, a 220, as we said, draws a lower amperage for the given amount of power. So you're not going to have as much flex, uh, much variable on the overall lights of everything connected to your fuse box. Granted, you have a big enough fuse box, that won't be that big a deal. But the other thing, the benefits of the power transfer over those long lines do transfer to the motor's operation because there is a lot of cable in there. And supposedly it's going to run a little bit cooler, which will mean it'll last longer uh, and probably run a little bit quieter. And from what other people have said, those are the benefits they have. The other performance benefit is power recovery. So imagine, well, this is 1.75 horsepower. It's all I really need. Uh, I mean, I've run 16 quarter white oak through it and yes it will bog down a tad bit at those extremes all that means is i slow down my feed rate i do have to have a very sharp blade when i do that one otherwise it will burn but not that big a deal you just can't throw, throw large pieces of wood through the blade 
at high speed at the lower horsepower, but it gets the job done, and that's very rare exception for me. But when it starts to bog down, you know, you have to back up quite a bit, and then you can speed up on the high, higher, lower voltage, higher amperage, just because it has to spool back up. At the higher voltage, lower amperage of the 220, it speeds up quicker and it is less likely to bog in the first place. Those are the theoreticals, and it's what other people have said, the benefits that they've done, gotten when they've done this conversion. I don't really have any method to measure the resistance spool back up, but what we can do is I will plug it in at the 110 power rating, 14 amp pull. And we will time from the spool up to the full power on uh, and we can compare that after we do this entire process to see if it spools up a little bit quicker. And that should tell us if it comes down. Plus, we can record the sound variable. I'm basically going to put the camera right above the edge of this so the, there should be some consistency so we can see the variables. And on the count of three, we will turn it on for a three count and turn it off. One, two, Now the kit we are going to use to do the conversion was about 70 bucks direct from sauce stock and it basically replaces half of the starter button. It's got one plug right here, three wires right there. So it can't be too difficult. So here's what we're working with. The box right there already configured up has three wires coming off of it. One's obviously the plug for the wall. We have one that's just going to clip into the on off switch. And then we have one that goes to the motor and it has a black, white, and green wire. The original saw stop instruction manual even contains the wiring diagram for both versions. In the 110s, which I have it wired up now, which I had to do whenever I assembled it, and then the 220. And the biggest difference is we put the black wire to the white wire going out to the motor and the white wire to the red wire going to the motor and then we just connect the black and yellow wire going to the motor together and obviously you want to ground it out fairly simple on the other side underside we have this box for the 110 it obviously has those three same wires one going for power one going to the motor to under this underneath this cover right here and the third coming into the switch box. So the first thing I need to do is go ahead and remove this entire setup, which they gave us the tools to do that one in our original install kit. From there, it looks like it's just four bolts that hold this with the switch. And voila, they're now separated. Now to turn our attention to separating it from the motor. Obviously I've got it unplugged. Well that sawdust there is not good. <laughs> and there we go. I'm going to go ahead and unhook these. It looks like originally we had the two blacks connected with the white, just like the 110 wiring diagram showed us. And then the white went in with the red and yellow. And unscrew the ground. And there we go. White, green, black. Now we've just got to disconnect this wire from that. It looks like we just have a few screws holding all that on. And looky there. There was only one clip on the inside and they only got, went in one way. So you disconnect that and 
the old power unit is completely separate. Just grab the new one and reverse the order. Start by attaching the new clip the only way it can go because a couple of them are squares. Click, click, and it's in. Then put on the wire holder, but be sure you get them both in the right spot before you really tighten it down. And after that, it's just reassembling the case with the screws. Then I can attach the new part to the old part. Now comes the supposed hard part, rewiring. Now I will say, I did have to go get the dust cover off those the other wires, off the other one, but oh well. And I'm not sure this dust cover did too much because that was awfully dusty when I pulled it out. So this gets fed through there, comes around, goes back underneath, comes through. We got a little nut for that side. And I didn't notice it Nate, earlier, but they even put the 220, 110 voltage on the inside of the cover. I wish they'd give me a sticker. I guess that needs to come off now. Anyways, following the instructions, we'll go ahead and reattach the ground. One nice thing is the motor wires are silver and the wires going to the controller are copper. Kind of keeps it easy to understand, so I'll just pull these ends off now. So we return to the wiring diagram, and the black and yellow from the motor, we just hooked those together. The white and red, the white from the controller, the red to the motor, those go together, and the black goes to the white. Any of y'all playing among us? Doesn't this feel like one of those tasks? So according to the instructions, copper is coming from the controller, silver is coming from the white. So copper white goes with silver red. Twist them together, then put their little cap on. Copper black goes to silver white. Twist them together, put their cap on. And then Silver yellow goes to silver black, and I need to go find a cap for those. Give them all a good tug to make sure that they aren't coming loose. And then shove them in here. Be careful, you have a little gasket right there. Supposedly it prevents dust from coming in, but we know that didn't work very well. So clip it on top, pop it down, one last screw, and we are done. Definitely save the old one because the table saw is a liquid asset. In case you ever need some cash, you can sell it. And being able to sell it as both 220 and 110 is a good thing. So let's plug it in and see if this puppy works. Fingers crossed. Going through all the safety checks and saw stuff stuff. I will say when I was doing some tests of this button feels a little bit tighter and I can't explain why. I fiddled around with the screws quite a bit and I actually loosened these two off right here, right, the bottom ones, and it, okay, here we go. Yeah, my button now feels funny, but sound-wise it's like more bassy. It does sound different. Now for our unscientific test. I got it about the same height, same distance away, on the count of three for three seconds. One, two.
Okay, here's the other one. video so I could see the hear the difference and sound wise there's a little tonal difference but I think I'm pretty sure I noticed that the 220 ramped up a little bit quicker that's gonna be enough to make any difference obviously ramping up doesn't make any difference but through a cut only time will tell so we'll have to revisit this in the future now my next video will be less saw stop centric and I'm going to do a full tune up adjustment of this table saw because after moving it into the new shop it probably everything got knocked off so come back then for a little bit more detailed on how to really fine tune a table saw but until then i want you to remember that it is always worth the effort to learn create stuff share it with others y'all be safe and have fun